Now let us move to phase noise. Uh, intensity of noise was talking about the fluctuations in amplitude, phase noise as we said is the fluctuation in phase. So, the immediate consequence is that in your constellation diagram, remember we talked about constellation diagram because our information is going to get encoded in uh, amplitude as well as in phase. Uh, Let us say this dashed line is representing the uh, phaser, okay, the phaser part, not omega t rotation we are not considering, just the phaser of it uh, for with, with a given you know a specific phi naught. Noise would mean that this phi is changing with time, which means this phaser is moving in between these two bounds. If there is no intensity noise, it is just the arc of the circle is the length of this line is the same if there is no intensity noise. Intensity noise would mean that the amplitude has changed. The phase noise will result only in the angle. So, this patch that I have drawn here actually shows some intensity noise also. Okay, so, this is intensity noise plus phase noise. If I have only phase noise, it is only the angle that is going to change. Okay. So, what really happens is I have this phaser rotating because of omega, I am not talking about that. I am removing this residue of this omega C t, if I remove that residue, the phaser keeps fluctuating, it could be here, it could be here, it could be here depending on the phase noise of the system. Okay. So, it is first of all we need to understand that we it is it is a concept that is relevant only for single frequency lasers, single longitudinal mode lasers. If I have multiple longitudinal modes, it means that I will have multiple carrier frequencies, then phase noise of which carrier are we talking about? There is an ambiguity. So, first of all, if somebody says the phase noise of a Fabry Perot laser is this much, you say no, 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 there is something wrong. Fabry Perot lasers will have multiple modes. So, what phase noise are you talking about? So, first of all you are talk, talking about only single frequency lasers. Okay. The next thing is uh, what is this phase noise? It means that the field oscillations are not perfect sinusoids. A way of representing this imperfection in the sinusoid is also this. Let us say this sinusoid is supposed to cross the 0 at specific uh, time instances and it is supposed to cross 0 here, but it does not cross 0, it crosses 0 slightly later or it may cross 0 slightly uh, earlier. That is another way of uh, looking at what this phase noise is and this keeps. So, it is as if the sinusoid is kind of stretching slowly. You could also have a case where the phase instead of continuing this way abruptly changes and starts this way that is also phase noise. Okay. But the beauty of the laser system is that the phase noise it does not jump that way. Suddenly from here it will not start oscillating here. It is a random walk process okay, which means that the phase noise, the phase at every instant of time or if you if you were to calculate the delta phi that is a random variable which follows random walk process. Meaning it will not suddenly jump from 45 degree to 185 degree. Noise should actually allow you to uh, do that uh, if it is just a Gaussian noise, but it is because of the random walk process. What will happen is if the oscillation is corresponding to this phase now, the next oscillation is going to be at a phase which is this let us say phi naught plus a delta phi which is a Gaussian random variable, 0 mean Gaussian random variable with respect to this. Well, it is not 0 mean, the mean is decided by something else, but, but that is a Gaussian random variable. And the next one is after the next instant of time, the phase fluctuation is actually with respect to this it moves, it is not with respect to the original. So, you will keep summing if you were to do a random work process. Okay. So, you 
it will be hard to get an instant where it suddenly jumps to something else. What you will see is that uh, the, the face actually does something like say these are the 0 crossings, you will have a 0 crossing, you will slightly go away from the 0 crossing, you will move slightly away from the 0 crossing and so on. The, so, if you were to plot you know take out and plot only one cycle on top of each other, first cycle could be this, second cycle could be uh, you know something like this, third cycle could be slightly uh, off from here and so on is some kind of a uh, face ambiguity there, that is how it will look like if you were to see this. Now why is this happening? Again spontaneous emission, spontaneous emission does not preserve face, it will come at random phases and there could be carrier density fluctuations. So, the reasons for intensity noise and phase noise are actually the same, but now we need to see how to quantify uh, this phase noise, right. Intensity noise we quantified with respect to the uh, RIN and the RIN spectrum, how do you quantify phase noise? So, I already gave you a hint, phase noise means uh, phase fluctuation, so that will give you frequency fluctuations. So, frequency fluctuations are quant quantified through spectral domain, so we need to have a spectral domain quantification. So, the question is when we are saying that when the vector is varying, the constellation or the, uh, the phasor is varying, uh, it varies only in phase. In reality that is absolutely not true, it is uh, intensity varying which means the length of the vector will vary and as a consequence of intensity varying you will also have phase varying and you could also have phase varying independently. So, in reality my constellation which was a point, which was a point if I did not have any noise, in the presence of noise that point is going to become ellipse, circle, ellipse, if it is only phase noise, it is going to become arc. If it is intensity and phase noise, ellipse or in general a circle, if the noise in every direction is the same. So, you transmitted this data, but the circle starts becoming enlarging. Now, remember this is not because something happened in the channel this is because something is happening right at the transmitter, and there is something that we need to minimize, but you have only devices with some specific intensity and phase noise. So, you need to now figure out how to compensate for this, okay. So, we will continue with phase noise uh, and quantification of phase noise and modulation in the uh, next class. Okay.